Okay, so here we go uh, on this video. I'm going to show you how to see data inside your starter database. I've already created the database and we can tell that it exists because it's here in the schemas. And <clears throat> it's got two tables in it, major and student. So what I'd like to do is see what's inside these databases. What I'm going to do to do that is create a new empty SQL server panel, or SQL script file rather, and click on this button. And I get, whoops, I clicked on the wrong button. I want to click on this one here, create a new SQL tab for executing queries. And that opens up an empty tab here. First thing I'm going to do is tell the database which uh, tell the database engine which database to use. So I'm going to say use and then starter. Uh, semicolon ends the statement. And then a blank line. Now I want to see everything in the major table. So I'm going to type uh, select star from major. Put a semicolon. And now I want to run this script and see what I've got. So I click on the, the lightning bolt up here. The script will run. Down here is the use starter statement ran. And this tells you down here in the bottom that I returned eight rows of data. I'm going to close the bottom panel here just to get it out of the way for the minute. And you can see here's the eight records in the database for the major table. Let's expand the major table here and look at the columns. This database, this column, this table rather, has three columns in it, an ID, a name, and a status value. So the ID just is a unique identifier of the, uh, the major. And then the name describes a major, the, the computer science or information systems. And status just says that, oh, number one means that this is current. Let's do the same thing, uh, but uh, let's uh, pull out the student table because, as you'll see, the student has more columns in it. So I'm just going to add a new uh, SQL tab here. Now I've got this one here, and I have this one. And I'm going to say select star from student. Student, it's singular. And I run this thing. Now let's look at the output window briefly. It returned 100 rows. So there's 100 rows in the student table. Now uh, this table has more columns in it. It has the ID, the last name, the first name, the email, sex, date of birth, and so on. You can read them across at the end down to the scholarship. The major ID tells us what uh, is the student's major. And the fact that it's null here means that there's nothing specified for the major for this person. Christine Bailey has no major right now. Okay, So let's look at what this means here when we see the data shown in what in a tabular form like this. I'm going to resize these so that we can see all the columns on the screen. Each row in a table represents a thing in the real world. In this case, it's a person uh, out there who happens to be a student at a university. So each one of these rows represents something out in the real world. Uh, in the major table over here, each one of these represents a major out in the real world in our college situation. So that's what the rows are. They re represent things in the real world. The columns, on the other hand, do one of two things. The ID column doesn't tell you anything about the person. It just identifies them. It's really their student ID number. The rest of these columns describe the person. So this person's last name is uh, uh, Alvarez, first name. Here's the person's email, and so on. So each one of the columns gives a property or a characteristic of the person, what their scholarship is, and so on. And one of the things about relational tables is all rows have the same columns. Enrolled date applies to every single student. Email applies to every single student. None of the rows get to opt out and say, oh, well, you know what? I'm not going to uh, have the sex value. Every row has the value for every attribute. It is possible for a student to not have a major because they're just undeclared right now. Now, between these two tables that are in the database, there is a connection. Um, we have in the major uh, table over here a bunch of majors numbered 1 through 8. And if we look at the students over here, they have major IDs that refer to those numbers in the major table. So Jose Armstrong, his major ID is 6. That means he's majoring in criminal justice. And uh, uh, Robert Biggs, his major ID is 2. 
he's referring he's majoring in information systems so there is a connection between these two tables in the database and instead of storing the name of the major in the student table we're just storing the ID this is what's called a reference this makes a reference over to the major table so Eric Bowman is majoring in six that's uh, criminal justice also so that's how we get basic data out with the select statement let's go look at this statement in a little bit more detail select is simply the SQL command to say we're going to get data out of a table asterisk means give me all of the columns from is where the data is going to come from and here it's going to be from student so this is uh, select star I usually call these star and most people working with databases do select star from major the use statement just told the database that you wanted to use the starter database and none of the others. You can leave this out if the starter is in bold because that's the default database and that's why this worked without using a use statement because starter was selected in bold. But in the homework and uh, elsewhere it's usually a good practice to say use first so you can be clear about um, exactly where you're going. That's it. So that's the basic idea of how we get information out of a database and the organization of the data in a database into rows and columns.